Welcome back. This is part two of our week seven lecture. We are discussing the domain of literacy, of spelling, orthography, and writing. And orthography, if you're not familiar with the term, is synonymous with spelling. Somewhat redundant for me to say spelling, orthography, and writing, but I wasn't sure if you'd be familiar with that term, which really just means the correct ordering of letters within a word. We're going to get started talking about the stages of writing and spelling development. You'll recall last week we talked about the stages of word recognition development. Our session objectives for this week are to be able to explain the development of writing and spelling, select and administer diagnostics for writing and spelling, analyze the assessment results to determine strengths and needs, determine the student's level of spelling development, and lastly, administer and score the QRI word list, which is another assessment you will be giving this week. So let's talk about the development of writing. I encourage you to go back and take a look at chapter seven on the foundations of literacy, page 271, is where they do an overview of the development of written language. And they remind us that um, children acquire writing competence by actually writing in a similar fashion they acquire competence in speech by talking, and they acquire competence in reading by actually reading. So the more the child is exposed to reading, writing, and language, the more that they are able to develop competency in each of those areas. However, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in a supportive environment where the child is receiving input, where they're being read bedtime stories, where they're observing role models reading and writing, where they're discussing and talking to different people within the home environment. Children acquire knowledge in a fundamentally aural way from the language that surrounds them. So again, that just reinforces that idea that they must receive input. And then when they see others around them writing for functional purposes, they will model their own behavior accordingly. I know someone mentioned in their a session reflection that their student that they are using for their practicum sessions appears to have a very supportive learning environment and has some great reading role models at home. And it is very important for children to see role models reading and writing so that they develop that value of reading that some of you saw your your students don't have that value of reading, um, which is what you're going to hopefully try and develop within them. Talking about the stages of writing development, this comes from page 271 of your text. Starts with scribbling, so their first attempts at writing. Then they are able to differentiate between drawing of pictures and actually the writing of what they interpret to be words. From there, they start to develop concepts of linearity, uniformity, symmetry, placement, the left to right motion, and the top to bottom directionality. After that, they start to develop letters or letter-like shapes. From there, they do combinations of letters, possibly with spaces. Then they start to write known isolated words, typically their own names. From there, they do simple sentences using phonetic or invented spelling. Then they begin to combine two or more sentences to express complete thoughts. At that time is when they start to get control over punctuation because you don't really need to master periods and capitals until you are writing two or more sentences. And then lastly, they start to um, form a discourse. So more than a couple sentences, but a whole story or informational text or argument or opinion. So those are the stages of writing development. Now let's talk a little bit about the development of orthographic knowledge. So again, orthography is just the correct sequence of letters in the writing system, also known as spelling. 
even more words can be acquired when they are explicitly examined to discover the orthographic relationships. So kind of like phonics by analogy, if you know the word make, you should be able to recognize the word take. The same applies with spelling where you can acquire more words when you explicitly examine them for patterns. There is a developmental progression that occurs for all learners and it follows a continuum and we will discuss that continuum in a little bit. So I have this analogy of miscues are to reading as spelling errors quote unquote are to writing. So we are going to be talking in our bonus lecture for the week about miscues, which are um, when a student responds with a word that is not the target word. And those really give us a glimpse into how the reader is processing the word. The same goes for spelling errors. They give us a window into how the student processes and where the student is developmentally for writing. So spelling quote unquote errors across children are not random. They shed light on what phonemes the students can and can't encode, which is the opposite of decode, and they're developing word knowledge. In fact, the best predictor of kinder children's success in phonology was their score on an invented spelling measure. And using diagnostic information from spelling inventories can help to plan effective instruction in phonics, spelling, and vocabulary. So development of spelling, knowledge, and skill. So these are these stages are taken from page 273 of your text. So first we have pre-phonemic spelling. So no sound symbol relationship is present. And these representations are likely to reflect earlier notions about how the writing system works. From there, they move on to early phonemic spelling, which has little phonemic information represented. For example, DRGML is dear grandma. So typically in this stage, they would be getting more of those consonant sounds. Um, so sometimes they have the initial and the final graphemes, but the letters in the middle, the sounds in the middle, aren't always represented. From there, we get into the phonetic or letter name spelling stage, which is where they have pretty readable spellings, but sometimes incorporate letter names as sounds. So for example, um, B-I-K would be bike because they hear the name of the I, so then they infer that it must be an I that goes there. That would be the letter name strategy. And then lastly is the tr transitional or within word pattern where they have mastered short vowels and they recognize that need for a long vowel marker, but they don't always know um, how to indicate the long vowel marker in that stage. So they might even like overgeneralize patterns. So magic E, anytime they hear a long vowel, they'll automatically throw a magic E on the end. So those are actually the spelling stages um, from the Virginia spelling studies. So pre-phonetic, semi-phonetic, phonetic, and traditional, transitional, sorry. Um, and then over here, these are the stages that come from words their way. So the prephonetic corresponds to emergent, semi-phonetic to letter name alphabetic. Um, the letter name alphabetic actually encompasses kind of both of those. Within word pattern goes with transitional. And then um, words their way is nice because after the transitional, that's where these stages just kind of stop and they assume you have correct spelling. But there's actually syllables and affixes. So looking at their um, spelling in multisyllable words and their ability to apply um, affixes and then also derivational relations um, is even, an even more complex um, level 
So when you're discussing your student's um, spelling stage, be using the words their way levels because um, they are more delineated and specific. And then also these are going to be on your assessment results. All right, so let's take a look at these developmental stages that come from words their way. So at the beginning, we have the emergent stage, which is roughly ages one to seven, grades pre-K to um, mid first grade. So this is characterized by random marks, representational drawings, mock linear or letter-like writing, random letters or numbers. Um, also, they're just really beginning to start learning letters, particularly the letters in their own name. And then toward the end of emergent spelling, they start to memorize some words and write those words repeatedly, cat, mom, love, dad. So I know some of you had your student write all of the words they knew, and really they didn't know more then some of those memorized words and the other words they tried to write were spelled incorrectly. So that might be indicative of this emergent stage. The next stage is the letter name alphabetic spelling stage, which could be ages four to nine, grades kinder to early third grade. So you can see here, like um, as we discussed with the early phonemic stage, um, Typically, initial and final consonant sounds are represented, but the vowel sounds aren't always well represented. Um, they are also using the actual name of the letter as um, that letter. And let's see, this type of writing is also called semi-phonetic because only some of the phonemes are represented. So you can see not all of the phonemes are represented there. Um, towards the end of the alphabetic, the letter name alphabetic spelling stage, there is starting to be a consistent use of vowels, especially long vowels which say their name. So T-I-M for time, like was discussed. Then from there, we move on to the within word stage, which could be ages 6 to 12, grades 1 to 4th grade. So here you'll see they're starting to learn some of those long vowel and um, irregular vowel spelling patterns, but they may over apply like the magic E to every single word they have, um, they hear with a long vowel. So they start to include patterns or chunks of letter sequences. It's called um, within word is also transitional because they are transitioning from the alphabetic layer to the meaning layer of English orthography. Um, they first, in this stage, they first study the common long vowel patterns and then move to the less common patterns. And they also start to learn the difference between homophones, such as bear and bear and deer and deer. Next, we have the syllables and affixes stage, um, which is ages 8 to 18, grades 3 through 8. This is upper elementary and middle school grades, and many of the errors occur in the two-syllable words, especially at the part of the syllable juncture where the two syllables meet, and it might um, involve errors with prefixes, suffixes, that sort of thing. So here for hopping, not knowing that you need to double the consonant, same thing there. So you're seeing some errors where that syllable juncture is in some of the trickier spellings. And last stage is the derivational stage. And this is as early as grades four or five and as late as middle school, high school. It's where students are examining how words share common derivations and related base words and root words. A lot of times errors here have to do with um, like a schwa sound, like in opposition. Here you hear the uh, the schwa, which is represented with an O, but they might misspell it with an I or a U or something like that. 
So that is the final stage of spelling, and I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there since I'm almost to my 15 minute limit, and we will come back with the um, synchrony of literacy development.